Oil is certainly front and center here. Now, why did oil fall 6%? There's a couple of reasons, but you've got to look into what's going to happen in the next 72 hours. Iran is preparing. There's no guarantee they will, but we expect that they will open their floodgates and oil will begin to flow quite dramatically because the sanctions will be lifted most likely this weekend. And we already had the worry about the supply glut roiling the oil markets. We have oil dipping below $30 a barrel, and that's what we see at the moment. We do continue to have that in play off the lows of the session, as you can see from this chart here, but still at 29 and change, it's a new 12-year low. I want to bring in Andy Lipow of Lipow Oil, and as the president of this consulting firm where you've watched this all again, I, I am throwing out the Liz Clayman contrarian view here. Is it possible, Andy, that Iran, seeing what happened today with oil dropping as precipitously as it has, may possibly say, oh, I see we hold the strings to this puppet, and they perhaps say, all right, we'll hold back from flooding everybody with more Iranian oil, at least for now, and then they look like they have more power over the rest of the OPEC players. Well, it's certainly possible. In fact, uh, Iran, if the sanctions are lifted, will have access to $100 billion in banks, so they may feel they don't have to sell oil right away. But the indications coming out of Iran is they really want to start selling the oil that's stored on tankers, and there's about 30 million barrels of that stuff that's ready to hit the markets. You know, when you talk about oil stored in tankers, we need to tell our viewers they have run out of storage. We're topping off pretty much here in this country, too. There is not a lot of storage left because there's so much pumping. But they are now storing it on big floating tankers off the coast of Iran. And so, therefore, they've got to move that stuff out. But they're going to do it at a loss, aren't they, Andy? What price do they need to see oil before they even break even? Well, you know, their break-even cost of oil is probably a little bit less than $30 a barrel because they're one of the low-cost producers like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait, but they really want to maximize their revenues and see oil prices higher. They're just stuck with OPEC because you've got Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, and the United Arab Emirates have no intention of cutting production. How much does China and the lack of usage, at least at the levels that we've seen in the past, because their economy is slowing down, play into this. Can we, can we point the finger at China as well and its slowing economy? Well, they've certainly contributed because we don't see the demand growth that the market has expected. In fact, we see coming out of China is record amounts of diesel exports which are really competing with those refiners in the Arabian Gulf and elsewhere, adding to this oversupply of products. You know, I'm just looking right now because I'm hearing some shouting on behalf of traders. I just need to tell our viewers that we're up certainly off a little bit of the floor that we saw in the last 13 minutes. Dow Jones Industrials down 386. We had been down 413. But again, we're waiting to see. We're five minutes away from seeing a little bit of a, of a reset. And that's when we start to see what kind of drama we, we might see with margin calls, etc. But Andy... In the end, as you look at all of this, what happens to oil companies? Because our viewers own oil stocks, whether it's Marathon or Williams, ExxonMobil, Chevron, Apache, Anadarko. Will they start to cut their dividends in a more meaningful way? Well, I think this is the biggest worry from these companies. We already had seen Marathon Oil cut their dividends 76 percent. We're hearing about many of these other companies going uh, cash flow negative and borrowing money to pay their dividends. And I don't think that can really last for a very long time. I don't think the banks really want to be in that position. You, you know, it's interesting you say that because also, in fact, it was last night I was on a, with a couple of the hosts uh, from Rev Radio. We were on a call after the one that was this program. And I was talking about the, the gold, the silver, the oil in the earth, the gold and silver being the, the wires, the connectors, the oil being the blood of the earth. And we're robbing those things. And, and it's throwing the earth off by us taking those out from where they should be. Instead of calling oil the blood of the earth, you should call it the cranial fluid of the earth. Cranial fluid, okay. It's what it is. It's what allows the thought processes of this planet to be echoed through many dimensions of stone and rock because they have their own layer of sentient living. I'll, I'll say this with the previous caller as well. I mean, like, I was feeling out what questions to ask you for a while and stuff, and I was actually going to ask you what oil was in a planet, <laughs> so you actually 
cover that in the last one. It, it's the but, cranial um, fluid, as well as what allows biological, planetary, neural synapses to be stored and then radiated into stone, and the stone converts that vibration to a surface expression of connection to the Earth. So it's a way to transfer Earth's cranial fluid into energy so that we at the surface feel the love of Earth. Yeah, because I remember um, there was a guy called Fletcher Prouty that talked about how in the 1890s there was like this conference and the Rockefellers sent some agents over to get oil convinced the world that it was a, um, a fossil fuel. Yep. Well, you mentioned in one of your last talks that petroleum wasn't what we thought it was, that it wasn't a fossil fuel, that it didn't come from fossil animals. <laughs> yeah. Is it just a mineral? Is it a mineral like any other mineral? Is that, is that how it, is that how it, uh, what would you say? Uh, how did it, what's the origin it, of You of see, <clears throat> when they first found petroleum, uh, because they were beginning to make motors and, and, and needed on axles of wheels and railroad trains and all that sort of thing, and remember, trains started in the beginning of the 19th century. Then oil went from a, just a lubricant to a fuel, and it made it valuable. And Rockefeller happened to be the smartest man in the business at the time, but he made a lot of most of his money, or much of it, off the transport of the petroleum as well as selling it. But <clears throat> one thing they realized was if you, because oil, uh, oil is uh, putting a price on oil is like putting a price on a pail of water. You know, the, the, no, no initial cost is in the ground, and, and in those days they were some of it almost what you'd call surface mining the oil. They didn't go down deep. So in order to get the price up, they hit on the idea that they would have to make it appear to be scarce. That they, that boy, after we take the next few barrels out, we're probably going to have to close as well. You know, that kind of thing. But a very fortuitous event. In 1892, there was a convention in Geneva of, of scientists to determine what organic substances are. Well, the definition of organic is a substance with hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. And so it's usually a living substance, a tree. You analyze a dead tree, hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen, and grass, and so on, living things. Animals, we are, hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. So at this Geneva Convention, Rockefeller took advantage of sending some scientists over who said, oil, petroleum, is hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon. Therefore, it must be derived from the, uh, the spoiling, the rotting of formerly living matter. And uh, playing the game properly, when the this scientific convention was over, they defined oil as a, a residue from formerly living matter. Well, that makes it a fossil fuel. I don't know why they decided to use the word fossil, but it says you know, formerly living matter is fossil. Well, of course, today, and, and, and another thing we should know is that there has never been a fossil, a, a, a real fossil, found below 16,000 feet. And you can't argue at 16,000 as a level line because someplace the ground sinks and so on. But 16 is what the scientists say, 16,000. We mine oil or we, we drill for oil at 30,000, 33,000, 28,000 every day of the week. So right there we rule it out that it isn't fossil fuel. It's called fossil fuel for the minds of the public to feel that it is uh, uh, an asset that is running out, being depleted. We talk about depletion allowance, which is a lot of, you know. And actually, if you know the world's oil supply, you know that it is not going to run out for an awfully long time. It is the second most prevalent liquid on Earth. And, and we haven't begun to dig. Well, with all that background, you see, the people in charge of the petroleum business for perfectly reasonable business uh, things, like any other man in a business, wants to keep his price as high as he can get away with. And the way to do is just say, well, there's no more. We, 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 the last barrel is going to cost $1,000, and then it's all done. And, and they preach that stuff. 
What bothers me is that, that in geology books, it's in there. The geologists say it's a fossil fuel. They, they've somehow they've been bought. I mean, you, I, I went to a four-year federal staff energy seminar run by the government of the United States during the so-called energy crisis. I was the participant that represented the railroad industry. The airline industry was there. Every AA administrative assistant of senators and congressmen was there. The CIA was there. The Defense Department was there. The State Department was there. Sometimes sitting right in front of me in the row would be Henry Kissinger with his friend, um, uh, the, the head of the uh, Department of Defense. Uh, uh, it's too bad. I can't put the names with them. But anyway, people like that, top men in the government sitting there listening to the Federal Staff Energy Seminar. Well, what this was doing is for four years, they were teaching a propaganda line to the leading people in this country and therefore to the leading people in the world, when you include the Hissinger, uh, Schlesinger, Kissinger and Schlesinger, among others. And the object of it was, as Kissinger used in his own terms when it was time for him to speak, to create a world price for oil. In other words, not... Uh, 30 cents a gallon here and 90 cents a gallon there, but let's get a world price. That's their goal, and they're trying to do that for wheat and everything else. We don't realize what, it, what the controls are, whether it's oil or some of these other things. Almost everything today is being categorized at the highest price they can possibly make it go. And so calling petroleum a fossil fuel is the basis for th this system uh, with respect to petroleum. Nice. And, and I went, I don't know if the name Arthur Kantrowitz rings any bell. Arthur Kantrowitz <clears throat> is the head of the Kantrowitz Labs set up by the uh, AFCO company uh, near Boston, uh, Scientific Laboratories. And um, a great man in the scientific world. And Kantrowitz and I were sitting at a table at this uh, seminar once and the table happened to be all young college grad PhD geologists. And so just to get a conversation started, I turned to Kantowitz and I said, Arthur, what do you think about this foolishness of these speakers talking about fossil fuel? And uh, it was kind of put up. He started laughing. He said, you know, that gets me. He said, he says, I don't, he said, I don't have a geology degree, but he had a thousand other degrees. And he said, I don't understand. He said, you'd think that these heads, these other fellows at the table, we did it on purpose, start <laughs> listening, you know. And he asked, he said, uh, are you gentlemen? He says, you're here at the meeting. Are you gentlemen by any chance geologists? And one fellow, yes, I am. And the other, yeah. he said, well, why don't you tell me? He said, why, why is, why is, oh, you know, and he went on like that. We brought the house down because nobody could argue with it. He us. He like, he like Einstein. People aren't going to. And he told him right there. He said, just drop it. But it's, it's in all the books and in all the papers. But it started from that strange meeting in 1892, a scientific convention. In G I have a big, thick scientific encyclopedia put out by the Devon Ostern Company that's about oh, 15 years old now. But it has the whole story of the conference. It doesn't have the Rockefeller part, but it has the whole story of how they straightened out organic chemicals and how it was all figured. And they've got petroleum right in there. Amazing. Amazing. So <laughs> These aren't accidental things, you see. There's a dollar sign behind almost everything. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, let's, let's, let's just break that down a bit. Um, so at the moment, they're multidimensional uh, or, or they're multi-incarnational. Uh, and so um, right. it's the, right. you know, they're in like, so there's, there's the spirit of David Rockefeller is walking around in like 500 people's beings is, you know, 500 people's um, consciousness. Uh, and they right. are part of that. Uh, incarnation. Rockefeller like, Collective. Uh, Collective. Yeah, the Rockefeller Collective. That's a good way of putting it. Um, emanations, they call them in, in Tibetan uh, uh, think, you know, circles. It's, it's like uh, the Buddha has emanations, which are, you know, actual, emana you know, physical incarnations of, of him herself. Um, yep. But there's a... Um, so what you're saying is that the the does that mean that these people you know the 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 members let's say the members of the collective as it were 
uh, the different clones and, and spin-offs uh, of Rockefeller, uh, that they're being um, you know, gradually eliminated or, or are they all being brought into a room given the choice? Do you want to go back to the Rockefeller uh, Foundation or, or do, do you want to be released and, and you know... Um, I'll give... I'll, 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 use the, I'll, use the, I'll use the Rockefeller as an example. Um, first thing yeah. first, actually a better description instead of clones, uh, literally... His spirit, their spirit was so big you couldn't fit it into one human body. So he was able to incarnate into 500 bodies and be born over a spirit of 12 years. And then as all the bodies were born and became the maturity, he was able to connect into the collective and then keep those people close and then open them up because he, there's one master controller to that. And that master, what there is, they're, they're the chess player. Because there's several dozen of these multi-dimensional entities. There's not just one. There's the Rockefellers and others. So he has to play the chess game with all of his bodies and lifetimes, as well as the chess games of all of the other players in the in the game. Okay, and there are clones. And when he clones himself, it's for a specific purpose to like um, help eliminate some type of karmic debt. So that clone will be the the focus of negative karma. So it can get killed off, recycled, and he doesn't gain negative karma as he's going. Um, how do I put it? The the Rockefeller Collective could be, let's say let's just say there's 500, and there's actually more for for him um, because he came at around a time when there was a war going on, so he was able to get a lot more of himself spread out to a lot more people um, because there was technology that was able to clear out the essence of a pregnant pregnant woman in the fetus and then allow that essence of him to come in. It's rather nasty, but that's what they do. And they've been practicing this uh, at, at a witchcraft level for thousands of years. They just were able to use technology now instead of instead of the, the energy from before because much of their psychic abilities have, have gone away because they've inbred with themselves instead of outbreading into the 2,000 bloodlines. So is that why they breed humans as psychics? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Fletcher Pratty was the guy that was Colonel X in Oliver Stone's JFK movie, and um, yeah, that was quite fascinating to me. So that, I mean, that 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 was why I was going to ask you what oil was and how it got convinced to that. So one of the truths that's going to come out is stuff like Lawrence of Arabia, when they were searching for the oil areas, they were actually searching for technology that mm. brought the cranial fluid or oil of earth into big cauldrons and this cauldron would feed a womb chakra mm. so Lawrence of Arabia was about discovering the technology to lure oil to the surface so that you get access to the cranial fluid which then would have been shipped into containers to be burnt in a car Wow! instead of naturally for the growth of new living sentient organisms to feel the connection and love to earth which then was converted into a pollution mm. so the big oil booms they knew that these big volumes of oil were actually sentient they could actually send um, sensors down there and actually get some form of alpha wave sentience resonating through the oil and they would oftentimes have to kill this before they could pump the oil out more layers, man. The cranial fluid of the earth. Ah, the cranial fluid of the earth. There we go. So the cranial fluid of the earth, um, it's created, how do I put this? Us burning the cranial fluid of earth has disconnected us from our, our natural fluidic pulse that connects us to the earth. The passing of the seasons, the moving of the stars, creates a longer-term cranial pulse. When Atlantis ended, it represented a death of another cranial pulse. But Earth doesn't have one single cranial pulse. It has tens of thousands because it's a multidimensional, multifunctional being. It ended its old experience of having the allowance of the rift wars to be existing on its surface. So all external source-based beings that were trying to resolve karma could send everything into the rifts and the rifts would ultimately poop out on the other side something else that is us that is the final expression of the resolution of all karma and this new pulse that's taking effect is literally a recreation of the oil 
the recreation of the silver, of the copper, of the gold that has been taken out of this earth by other off-world beings. And then in that void space of non-creation and new creation, we are going to be generating whole new forms of spiritual connections to this planet through our DNA. That is the whole purpose of the DNA, to be the sovereign interacting process of communication of the cranial pulse of this world, or the thousands of cranial pulses of this world, or the cranial pulse of another world. Very interesting. I mean, when you mentioned about the womb chakra, that was like, of course, it's got to be something to do with that as well. Well, um, in that womb chakra is where every individual being has access to infinite space, their own bubble of infinite space on Earth. Mm. And with that direct cranial pulse connection means you, in your infinite space, you can create a billion trees and nurture them for a trillion years and then ask those trees who wants to go to the surface of another world through the process of transmuting the energy here in my infinite space to grafting it on the surface of another world of a finite space so it can begin to have its infinite space. How about between the, the male and the female expression, with the connection to that then as well? Well, the cranial pulse is what triggers the birth and death process. It, it is in the cranial pulse that the synaptic energy transference from this world that says that there's a life and death process here. And that, that life and death process is not related to any frequency of labeled time. In between one generation of one cranial pulse into the next generation, or if the being can simultaneously experience more planet, planetary cranial pulses, so that it's a part of the bigger picture of what this world is trying to do, constantly birth people into the new higher frequency of light and energy. Mm, okay, well then, can I tie this into what's going on in Syria and the Arab region sure. with the wars? Is mm -hmm. that the the significance of that connection with those womb chakras over there with the oil as well. Correct. Because that would wow. be the connection to the cranial pulse that is passing. That is the cranial wow. pulse when the Anunnaki invaded, and they invaded at a time where the rifts were not seen on the surface of the world. Um, they were hidden by technology, and when the Anunnaki got here, they got entangled in the rifts unknowingly. Uh, now I remember what I was going to say is... Uh, 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 Alia Yakta asked when Caesar passed the Rubicon. That is yeah. where Caesar was given, let's just say, the ability to move his troops from the river, the 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 from the river crossing of the river of the Rubicon, and he could be at the river and anywhere else in the world with an entire army and go and take over an area that might have been lightly defended by ancient technology, but nowhere near able to defend against ninety thousand. And this is where much of the Roman Empire or the Babylonian Empire began to understand that it can send its army beyond its borders and it would be in another space and time on the surface of this world. Like shock troops sort of thing and, and yes. be able to deploy rapidly and stuff to, to mitigate sort of anything that didn't have the technology. Yeah, that I was get, I get coming that. through the rips, correct. Wow, wow, wow. And yeah. this is how all of the individual bubbles of reality were conquered one by one by one by shutting down the individual rifts and in the individual bubbles of infinite space that are available to everyone, but nobody was occupying those spaces. So when they occupied Syria, Jordan, etc., etc., it was to connect to the cranial pulse that was the initial concept that drew the Anunnaki here to create some form of change. At the same time, the Anunnaki, the Syrians were here, but they were just here on another timeline, so the Anunnaki... The Syrians and the Anunnaki never truly realized they were occupying the same planet at the same time. And um, the ultimate stirrers of this part, that the 15, that were sort of controlling all this as well? Manipulating, yes. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So that they could come to a point where there was so much crossover of mythology from worlds that off-world sources couldn't predict what belief system was going to last through generational time belief. So they had to once again result to the cranial pulse, thus why oil was turned into a new system of control. Because they can synthesize oil. 
can they synthesize the same effect as burning cranial, the cranial fluid of Earth? That's the next layer of technology of imprint in us. So they want to give us an energy source that isn't the Earth. Yeah, it's a bit like you've talked about gold a lot and the, um, you know, the, the specific regions of gold have a different energy that can hold the energy as well. I think there's a parallel to that, isn't there? As well as many other minerals and elements out there. Like the, 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 the mineral um, 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 azurite. Um, it's a blue stone that kind of looks like popcorn, but when you look at it close, it's crystal. If that were, let's just say, figured out how to make in mass a synthetic version of it alongside the natural version of it, you could create humongous energy machines that could just give free energy to everyone on the world. And this is a way to stay connected to our world versus science, like describing a Tesla system just giving you raw power and access to the atoms of the void. Mm. Everything is a spiritual medium or a capacitor to step energy from one dimension into another or from one dimension down to another. That's the form of energy technology we have interfunctioning and co-creating in our DNA skin suits. Um, so the Syrian war. Yeah, yeah, what about that? All the wars that exist right now on our planet are meant to suppress the chakra energy that's below it. Oh. There are a cluster of womb chakras all throughout the Middle East <clears throat> called the Garden of Eden at one point in the Bible. Mm. With what it meant is there could be thousands of local realities within that zone that were all birthing new life that could be transported to a new blank Akashic record planet. Mm -hmm. It was life that was meant to rapidly be created and then sent somewhere else. Mm. What's happening there now is war, so every time someone dies, they're instantly recycled back into the system of war. So you could die once and all of a sudden be forced to be a walk-in on somebody else who's dying. Whew, that yeah. could get pretty tiring. And that, that, is, that is what's suppressing the energy of the chakras okay. from waking up. Those will be, these will be the first sets of chakras that wake up and begin to change the people on that, in that area. And that's why there's war there. And that's why the rebellion started with a fruit vendor, because that was the first opening of the collection of those chakras.